This is a book that I read when it first came out in 1991. It's an old book called Shiloh by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. You notice the little gold seal. It won the Newbery Award that year. And I haven't read this in a long, long time. I'd like to share a chapter with you. There's a series that come after this too, but this one is the first one. Chapter one. The day Shiloh come, we're having us a big Sunday dinner. Daryl Lynn's dipping bread in her glass of cold tea the way she likes. And Becky pushes her beans up over the edge of her plate in a rush to get them down. Ma gives us a scolding look. Just once in my life, she says, I'd like to see a bite of food go direct from the dish into somebody's mouth without detour of any kind. She's looking at me when she says it, though. It isn't that I don't like fried rabbit. I like it fine. I just don't want to bite down on buckshot, that's all. And I'm checking every piece. Oh, I looked that rabbit over real good, Marty. You won't find any buckshot in that thigh, Dad says, buttering his bread. I shot him in the neck. Somehow I wish he hadn't said that. I pushed the meat from one side of my plate to the other, threw the sweet potatoes and back again. Well, did it die right off? No one, I can't eat it all unless it had. Sure enough, soon enough. You shoot his head clean off? Daryl Lynn asked. She's like that. Dad chews real slow before he answers. No, not quite, he says. He goes on eating, which is when I leave the table. The best thing about Sundays is we eat our big meal at noon, and once you get your belly full, you can walk all over West Virginia before you're hungry again. Any other day you start out after dinner, you've got to come back when it's dark. So I take the 22 rifle Dad had given me on the march on my 11th birthday, and I set out up the road to see what I could shoot. I'd like to find me an apple hanging way out on a branch, see if I can bring it down, or line up a few cans on a rail fence and shoot them off. Never shoot anything moving, though. Never had the slightest wish. We live high up in the hills above Friendly. Hardly everybody, and hardly anybody knows where, where that is, because Friendly's right near Sisterville, which is halfway between Wheeling and Parkersburg. Used to be, my daddy told me, Sisterville was one of the best places you could live in in the whole state. Ask me the best place to live, I'd say, right here, where we are. Little four-room house with hills on three sides. Afternoon is my second best time to go up to the hills, though. Morning's the best, especially in the summer. Early, early morning. On one morning, I saw three kinds of animals, not counting cats, dogs, frogs, cows, and horses, I saw a groundhog, I saw a doe, two fawns, I saw a gray fox with a reddish head, but I bet his daddy was a gray fox and his mom was probably a red one. My favorite place to walk is just across this ratty old bridge where the road curves over by the, by the old shallow schoolhouse, follows the river, rivers on one side, trees on the other, sometimes a house or two. And on this particular afternoon, I'm about halfway up the road along the river when I see something out of the corner of my eye. Something moves. I look, and about 15 yards off, there's this short-haired dog. It's white with brown and black spots. Not making any kind of noise, just kind of slinking along with his head down, watching me tail between his legs like he's hardly got the right to breathe. Beagle, maybe a year or two old. I stop, and the dog stops. Looks like he's been caught doing something awful, when I can tell all he really wants is to follow along beside me. Here, boy, I say, slap my thigh. Dog goes down in his stomach, groveling about in the grass. 
I laugh and I start over toward him. Got an old worn out collar on, probably older than he is. Better belong to long, another dog before him. Come on, boy, I say, put it out my hand. Dog gets up, he backs off. He don't even whimper. Like, like he's lost his bark. Something really hurts you inside when you see a dog cringe like that. You know, somebody's been kicking at him, beating on him, maybe. It's okay, boy. I say, I'm a little closer. Still, he backs off. So, I, I just take my gun and follow the river. And ever so often, I look over my shoulder and there he is, the beagle. I stop, he stops. I, I can see his ribs. Real bad. But he isn't plumped out or anything. There's a broken branch hanging from a limb out over the water. And I'm wondering if I could bring it down with one shot. So I, I raise my gun and then I think about how the shot or the sound might scare that dog off. And I decide, I don't think I want to shoot my gun much that day. It's a slow river. You walk beside it, you figure it's not even moving, but if you stop, you can see leaves and things going along. Now and then a fish jumps, big fish. That's the thing. The dog's still trailing his tail, tucked in. It's funny how he don't even make a sound. Finally, I sit on a log, I put my gun at my feet, and I wait. Back down the road, the dog sits too. Sits right in the middle of the road, head on his paws. Here, boy, I say again, at my knee. He wiggles a little, don't come. Maybe it's a she-dog. Here, girl, I say. Dog still don't come. I decide to wake the dog out. After three or four minutes on the log, gets born. I start off again, so does the beagle. I don't know where you'd end up if you followed the river all the way. Heard somebody say it curves about, comes back on itself, but if it didn't, I got home after dark, I'd get a good whooping. So I always go as far as the ford where the river spills over the path, and then I, I head back. When I turn around, the dog sees me coming. So he goes off into the woods. I figure, well, that's the last I'll see of that beagle. I get halfway down the road again before I look back and he is. I stop, he stops. I go, he goes. And then, hardly thinking on it, I whistle. It's like pressing a magic button. That beagle comes barreling toward me, legs going lickety split, long ears flopping, tail sticking up like a flagpole. This time when I put my hand out, he licks all my fingers and he jumps up against my leg, making little yelps in his throat. He can't get enough of me. Like I've been saying no all along and now I'd say yes, he could come. It's a he dog like I thought. Hey boy. You're really something now, you know that? And I'm laughing as a beagle makes circles around me. I squat down and the dog licks my face, my neck. Where'd he learn to come if you whistle or to hang back if you don't? I'm so busy watching the dog, I didn't even, know, didn't even notice it started to rain. Don't bother me, don't bother the dog neither. I'm looking for the place I first saw him. Does he live here, I wonder? Or, or the house on up the road? Each place we pass, I figure he'll stop. Somebody come out and whistle, maybe. But nobody comes out. And the dog don't stop. Keeps going even after we get to the old Shiloh schoolhouse. Even starts across the bridge. Tail going like a propeller. <laughs> he, he licks my hand every so often to make sure I'm still there. Mouth open. Like he's smiling. He is smiling. 
once he follows me across the bridge though and I'm past the grist mill, I start to worry because looks like he's fixing to follow me all the way to our house. I'm in trouble enough coming home my clothes all wet. Ma's mama died of pneumonia and we don't ever get the chance to forget it. And now I got a dog with me and we were never allowed to have pets. And Ma says, if you can't afford to feed them and take them to the vet when they're sick, you have no right to taking them in. It's true enough. I don't say a word to the beagle for the rest of the way home, hoping he'll turn at some point and go home, but the dog keeps coming. Get to the front stoop and say, go home, boy. And I feel my heart squeeze up the way he stops smiling. Sticks his tail between his legs and he slinks off. He goes as far as the sycamore tree. He's lying down in the wet grass there, head on his paws. When I come in the house, Ma says, whose dog is that? I shrugged. Uh, he just followed me is all. Where'd he pick up with you? Dad asked. Up in China, across the bridge. On the road by the river? I bet that's Judd Travers Beagle. He got himself another hunting dog just a few weeks ago. Judd got him a hunting dog. How come you don't treat him right? Well, how you know he don't? With the dog acts, he's scared to pee almost. Ma gives me a dirty look. Don't seem to me he's got any marks on him, Dad says, studying him from our window. Don't have a mark a dog to hurt him, I'm thinking. I just don't pay any attention, he'll go away. Yes, and get out of those wet clothes, Mom tells me. You want to follow your grandma sl Slater to the grave? Change clothes. I sit down, I turn on the TV. You only have two channels. On Saturday afternoons, it's preaching and baseball. So I watch baseball for an hour. And I get up and sneak over to the window. Ma knows what I'm all about. She asks, that shadow dog still out there? I nod. He's looking at me. He sees me there at the window, and his tail starts to thump. I'm going to call him Shiloh. What a book this is by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe. You just might find a very special book that will change your whole life. Thank you. Bye-bye.